Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this WOSN special. My name is Chris Parks, joined by Jeff Swick here, playing hardball against ALS, better known as Lou Gehrig's disease here. A big thing that's going on in our area that Jeff has helped started. It started back in 2012 and now here big in 2013. Jeff, I'll kind of let you explain things of what's kind of going on. It all started with the game, really, to get things going for Jennings Lipstick back in May of 2002 playing baseball, and I'll kind of let you kind of key us in and just how things kind of got started with this great foundation. Well, Chris, I appreciate having me in. It's, uh, you know, last year on, on in the end of April, we had our game. Mm -hmm. um, what, what we did is I was a head coach at Fort Jennings for mm -hmm. the last 12 years, and I always was wanted to do something with my kids. You know, it was always community outreach to teach our kids to do, to give back to their community. And last year, a gentleman, Gene Van London, otherwise known as Yogi, was, uh, um, had been stricken with ALS since mm -hmm. 2010. Um, and then Dan Mangus from Lipsick, otherwise known as Orson, um, he had been stricken since 2008. And um, both gentlemen were very key into the community and they did a lot of things with the community. Um, Yogi was a umpire for 30 years, Dan coached football and he, he owned a, a business right in town. And so we come together last year with both teams and uh, to form a, an honorary game for them mm -hmm. to help support them, to help support the families. And uh, it was a very big success. You know, you were there, we had a chance to really get involved and, and both men were very special to me. They were, they, you know, Gene's family had always been, I grew up down the road from them. I got a chance to, to know their fa family. I grew up with their kids. My wife was a new, Orson's family real well, babysit their kids. You know, their kids are in college now. And, and we got a chance, we came together, and what we did was, uh, was we, both teams played, wore t-shirts last year. We got our shirts, we, got, we had, a, had raffle baskets, things like that. Well, very su good success. We raised over $10,000 last year, so we thought that was very good. Well, in the process, a lot of coaches approached me and said, Jeff, what you guys are doing was fantastic. What, we would love to get involved. What can we do? Um, so that, as the season progressed last year, we did that. And, and six weeks after our event, Yogi passed away. And for me, it was such, it was like getting hit in the, bat, the gut with a bat. And mm -hmm. I just, you know, it was, it, it really made me rethink life, really made me think what I was doing and what I should be doing um, to better myself. So I kind of spent the whole season as coaches approached and talked to me and there. And from that point, this summer, I had a good heartwarming with my family. And, and we said, you know, what are we, you know, what am I really doing? Am I doing the right thing? And I wanted to expand what we did last year to a bigger scale. Um, so we took that on and we actually formed our foundation. Um, in October, I stepped down as head coach and, and uh, took that on and then we formed our foundation and uh, it has been going crazy since. It certainly has. You guys have been so busy here in 2013. Kind of going back to that game a little bit, the Fort Jennings Lipstick uh, last season, just how much uh, was, how emotionally involved were you in that game? I remember being there and shooting pregame and everything and just the communities, that place was packed. There were so many people for it. You raised so much money for it and I know it really, really affected you and you really got such a, a real positive outlook on it. It was and you know, that's the thing for me, you know, I'm kind of an emotional guy anyway. It's kind of something that, you know, between my faith and between my family and, and everything else. And, you know, one of the things that we had on my t-shirts that we did that year was, it's not, it, it's all about we, not the me. And it kind of signif signified what we did because for me, it just, it was a way to show these gentlemen respect mm -hmm. and show some honor to these families. And it was just the outpour from the communities where it's just huge. And, and like I said, and, and, and I did, it got me choked up and it got me to, to really realize what life really is about. That those kids last year got a chance to experience something with two gentlemen that they won't get a chance to do it. It didn't matter what happened on the field that night. Mm, it it was everything outside of that. And they got a chance to do some things that, you know, even to this day, the, the seniors last year from both teams got a chance to still come back to me and say, you know, coach, we just really love the fact of what you did. And we got a chance to be a part of that, you know, and, and cause Yogi or Orson passed away this last November. So really in less than eight months, both of our found, as we call them, founding fathers have passed away. And, and that's just, this disease is so brutal to these families and that's kind of where we got we our concept for the foundation came into play. Yogi and Orson as you said mentioned passed away in 2012 unfortunately for them great men 
the smiles on their faces that day is one thing I'll always remember being a part of that game and just how happy they were to have all those people there. I know you're getting a little choked up about it. Uh, just the, how happy were they in that moment to see all those people supporting them? Well, that was the thing about that is both with both those guys there, and you know, they it was funny because we kind of set a tent up <laughs> for and then to kind of put them aside. Oh, we, had, yeah. we had guy, we had waiters and everything ready to go for them. They were nowhere to be found. <laughs> they were traveling around on their on, in their cars. They were you know on their their uh, chairs. And, yeah. and next thing I know, I turn around and they're both out in the middle of the field <laughs> together. And I'm like, you know what? That was what it was about. And you know the smiles on there and the family, Yogi's family. You know, a few weeks at the funeral was like, Jeff. That was one of the things that he was hanging on for. He wanted. There was one thing he was going to do. He was going to make that game Certainly. because he respected the aspect and he was so appreciative and and it those of them things that hit not only myself but the our volunteers and everybody that's been 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 stepping up is that emotional part of it that that these families need something positive to get out of it because the disease is so brutal of taking enjoyment taking life away from you that we're, that's one of our main focuses and one of main goals is to give them back that to take them a few moments to, even if it's for a day, even if it's for a few hours, to really um, give them that feel back. And that's what's been fantastic for me. You guys have a new inductee here in 2013, Bernard Wilker, uh, farmer, plumber, pipe fitter from Salina Lake Contracting, a guy that has 31 grandchildren. He's going to be inducted into the ALS Hall of Fame this year. How about, uh, talk a little bit about Bernard and just his story. Yeah, Bernard's been, you know, we what we did is what inside the foundation, you, we, we take families and we induct them into our Hall of Fame. What that allows us to do is to give a chance to to take these families and, mm -hmm. and, and honor them. Bernard was, you know, the family approached us, and, and he has grandkids on the on the baseball team. Well, he's got a lot of them. Yeah, and, and they're all over the place. I mean, talking with the family, you know, they're they're from Missouri. They have a family in Missouri, all over the state of Ohio, and and to see them fam coming together, and and he was, you know, not getting a chance to meet some of these these patients that because they have passed away, but to but but to see the the joy in the family of a way to, that somebody's out there helping them. Um, you know, I was just actually on Saturday, I was, I was up in Napoleon and we inducted two families up there. And you know, one, uh, Patricia Westrick, she was actually there. She was actually fighting and presently fighting it. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that she, she does is she's been a, the organist at her church for 30 years. And the disease took her voice, but as, what the family says is it didn't take it didn't take what she does it didn't it hasn't taken that one thing that allows her to she's allowed to give her you know her her gift of playing the piano so getting a chance to truly sit there with the families and l meet them and learn them and watch see the great grandkids and the mm -hmm. grandkids that is the part that i find rewarding because to truly get these these families to know that that we're there and and you know and and coming up this week um, we've got a few, you know, we're heading over to Ohio Northern on Saturday and there's a family there. Um, Monday, we have two inductees families at Kaleida on Monday. Mm -hmm. um, and then on Wednesday, we go up to Toledo to the to Fifth Third Field. And that's something that we're with, uh, we've got a gentleman from Link, or uh, from uh, um, Pandora. Okay. That's uh, Tim Colley. He's, he was just so it's, it's just, it's growing. And I tell the families, I said, I'm not happy about what you're going through. I'm happy that we can now have you as a support. We can give you support. You know, I enjoy talking with those kids and the grandkids and, and not only that, but the players at these games. Oh yeah. These, these student athletes, you know, so much about, well, what's in it for me? And our, one of our goal uh, lines that I tell them is instead of asking what's in it for me, how about asking, what can I do for you? And that's kind of one of the things that we've really been uh, been geared towards. It's a really neat thing, just seeing uh, baseball. Everyone loves the sport of baseball. It seems like in the spring and summertime, just coming together, raising money for such a great cause here. We're going to take a break here with Jeff. When we return, he's going to explain some games coming up here in 2013, ways you can get involved, and just how things are really, really gearing up and just getting better for this foundation coming up next.
We're back one final time here playing hardball against ALS. Jeff Swick and Chris Parks with you as we have already talked a little bit about 2012, some things that have happened there. Now we're looking forward to 2013. Already a bunch of ALS games have been in the books here. Jeff, just talk uh, and kind of take us through how many more games you have left on your schedule and just uh, how many stops you'll be making and how busy your spring's really been. <laughs> it's been it's been crazy, Chris. You know, we <laughs> sat and talked about that. That you know, as a as a fellow coach, my wife is like. Good thing I'm used to this in the spring no because, because she, uh, you know, with me not home a lot, um, we've actually got on the docket we had 25 sites for this for this season with over 50 some. One schools. last year, 25 this year. I think yeah. that number is incredible. Yeah, and a lot of and what we did in January, we actually partnered with the state baseball coaches association in January, and and to be kind of their umbrella, to be their foundation umbrella for um, Lou Gehrig's disease support, and you know, and their goal is in 2014 to have all the schools in the state of Ohio be doing something with our foundation, wow. which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, you know, locally, you know, we've got coming up here, we've you know, we've got six under our belt. Uh, luckily, we've only lost one so far with this crazy weather, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, it's springtime yeah. in Ohio, it's bound to happen. <laughs> and what we've been lucky enough to do is reschedule those, that. So that's, we've had that. But we've got, you know, coming up tomorrow, we're supposed to be at Ottaville and Bluffton. Um, on Thursday, we're supposed to be over at Columbus Grove with the Columbus Grove Allen East game. Yep, and NWC. And NWC game. And that's one of the things we really tried to do is let these coaches try to find some, some games that were big games for them, league games, because then we knew it would be rescheduled. Um, but I also, we also tried to do is keep our games so I could physically be at every single site. I felt that was very important this first year to get these coaches to be understanding what we're doing, kind of get a feel of how things are going to go. That way next year and the years to follow, they're able and comfortable with doing their own event. And that's what our goal is to, as we expand. Um, you know, next week we have a whole docket, I was telling you. Mm -hmm. We go Monday through Saturday and there's nine games in that six six day period. Um, you know, from we go to Clyda, we go to uh, we got the OG Defiance, big WBL game up in up in Defiance. Then we go Wednesday, we have a double header at Fifth Third Field in Toledo, mm -hmm. which is which that'll be fun up there. And we got Perrysburg and Springfield kicking off at four, and then we go at seven, we go um, the big PCL game with Pandora and Miller City. Um, and then we lead this all the way down through the end of May. We do our, um, um, from there, we got two all two big all-star games that we've got, one up in Lorain County and, and then up in Divi uh, District 9 mm -hmm. up, up by, in Vermilion. So um, we've got a bunch. We also have a lot of games. Like we've got, we're down in Grove City, down in Washington Courthouse. Um, we're all the way down in Gallia, which is all the way down in southern, southeastern Ohio. Wow. Um, those schools have contacted us and said, "Hey, we want to we want to be involved. Um, you know, can you send us information?" And and they're taking on their own events. The great thing about uh, what you guys are doing, of course, uh, battling Lou Gehrig's disease, playing hardball against ALS, of course, of what is going on. The setups that you guys have at these games is just incredible. There's so many volunteers you have, so many people involved in this. Uh, kind of explain that. How many volunteers did you have, maybe at a given game and just the elaborate setups you guys have to do at each game as well too. Yeah, one of the things that we've uh, had an opportunity to do is, um, you know, we've we've been blessed to have a lot of donations for materials. We were donated our box truck that you've seen, you know, mm -hmm. and, and in there we have our Hall of Fame board. So we, we, we that that we recognize all of our Hall of Fame members at. Certainly, you got um, that nice little list up there. Yeah, we, we put their pictures up there and everything else. We have our list of our events and also our big uh, corporate donors. Mm -hmm. but we also have two big tents and all of our all of our from our T-shirt sales and and all of our merchandise and we do a lot of gift baskets throughout that we we've gotten through our, our donors um, to do some things. Um, so it's it's about we show up two hours before the game time. We were there. I'm there usually about quarter till three on a five o'clock start. Um, and usually by, it's about till 4 o'clock till we're set up ready to go and then the game goes through and then we're there so it's you know it's basically from from quarter till three till usually about eight o'clock and in addition to that you're working a full-time job as well too this is like a full-time job in itself of what you're doing as well yeah too. it is you know with our family and I'm I've been lucky I'm lucky enough to have a family construction business that my father and my brother-in-law um, and myself run that uh, you know that they've picked up a lot of slack you know on you know because really right now in the month of April I've been working half you know half the time half days bet, yeah and it's a challenge professionally but it's one of those things that, you know, we all work together. It's kind of that team thing, you know, you know, kind of behind the scenes. A lot of people say, well, you know, doing, and I say my father and my brother-in-law are huge in my family support and my wife and my kids. You know, my two boys, you know, you know, they don't get to see dad very often. And, 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 and <laughs> the bad thing about that is, is yeah. it hurts dad is that because my oldest son's six and he had an opportunity to, uh, to be with me at, in the dugouts. And I tell you what, Chris, that was, 
that telling him that dad wasn't coaching was harder than telling my Paul players and everybody else. Because, you know, when a six-year-old that's used to being in the dugout and he says that and, and he goes, his tears come down his eyes and his first oh, question man. to me goes, Dad, am I ever going to see those ball players again? You know, and it's just, it hit me then that that's tough, but it was, it was so good to know that I said, no, buddy, we're going to get a chance. You're going to get a chance to be with me. And so he comes to some of our events with, with mm -hmm. me. And, you know, after school, my wife will bring him there and, and we get a chance to spend some time as, as father and son and, you know, and do, do that. It seems like the family, your family has certainly embraced it, uh, your wife and your kids as well, too. How about the communities around the area that uh, you've hosted games in as well, too? How are the communities, how are the people really taking what you're doing here this spring and uh, how much have they enjoyed it? They've had, they, it's been a great response because, you know, especially the Lima area here, um, Kindred Hospital here in Lima has, um, has partnered with us on all of our Allen County games. Okay. Um, um, Orthopedic Institute of Ohio, Orthopedic Trauma Service, especially uh, Dr. Steve Heyman, they were a big key aspect for our t-shirts. So we've taken those, but the communities really, really, really gave us a lot of strength with that. And they gave us a chance to be a part of what we're doing and, and the outpour of, of the athletic boosters and their, um, their, their parent boosters. And, you know, just last night up in Bryan, you know, their, their athletic boosters gave us a, a, you know, a $250 donation just because they felt it was come, they were, wanted That's to do what they're doing. Yeah. So, um, you know, we got a big uh, uh, corporate fundraiser coming up this summer here, right here in Lima mm -hmm. on August 3rd. And that's a wiffle ball. wiffle ball tournament. <laughs> I told you guys, you know, yeah. I want you guys to come out and uh, enjoy that with us. Yeah, we're looking forward to that. There's just so many things going on. You guys have a great website as well, too. If people want to donate or check out your website, where can they go for that? Yeah, they just, just uh, log on and just go to P-H-A-A-L-S. Dot org, so it's falls.org. Mm -hmm. um, you can go check that out. There's a lot. There's a promo video on there. Um, you can also like us on Facebook. Um, we got a lot of our. Up, we we really upload our pictures and uh, and some of the things on there on a mm -hmm. nightly basis. Um, you can check that out. And right on there, they've got a chance to uh, email me if they anything in corporations mm -hmm. if they want to donate. Please, you know, jump on there and get an opportunity to, uh, you know, even if it's, as we say, every dollar counts. And I know a lot of, a lot of fun foundations say that, but it's something that for us, this is a disease that, that affects, quickly affects the lives of, of families. And mm -hmm. it's a short-term disease, meaning when I say that from diagnosis to passing is the, the average is three years. And, and getting diagnosed, it takes eight to, eight, eight to 12 months to be diagnosed. Wow. So mm. in that three years, there's a lot of time that these families, you know, giving back. And we have two big pro programs that we do and, and uh, families get a chance to experience that. And like I said, we just want to give a chance to, um, for families to, uh, to give back and know that there's somebody out there that's, that's there to help. And the great thing about this too, is you want to expand this, uh one game a season to go, 25 games this year. You want this to go statewide, which I think it's a great thing. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing, you know, with getting partnered with the State Baseball Coach Association this in January was huge for us because that gave us some real validity along with some of the medical back, medical corporations mm -hmm. that backed us. That gave us those two areas that we really needed to be because the medical side allowed us to, to have some, some validity and then the baseball. And this summer I'm heading out to Nebraska to do the same concept, the same idea to the Nebraska Coaches Association. And that's, that's a huge thing for us mm -hmm. because, you know, our goal, you know, one of my big goals, and we always say set goals high because if you reach some, something you haven't set it high enough, is in 2015 the Cincinnati Reds have the, the Major League All-Star game yeah, it's at Great American Ballpark. Yeah. Our goal is to have our brand, our logo in that ballpark because that just shows that where we're at and where we're going to be is expanding to what we need to be. High goals set for ALS here and f playing hardball against that. That'll wrap up our segment here. It's been a great 15 minutes. Again, that website one more time. Uh, P-H-A-A-L-S.org, um, falls.org. Mm -hmm. Please visit it and then get an opportunity to, to check us out. It's been a pleasure here with Jeff Swick. I'm Chris Sparks. Thanks again for tuning in to this WOSN special presentation, playing hardball against ALS. We'll see you next time on the West Ohio Sports Network.